Okay, so for example, for someone that is starting out and they have, they've not been reg regularly exercising, then would it be appropriate for them to go straight into high intensity interval training or would you phase them in? Just like anything, like all movement is good. And so if you're just starting out, then you want to move, right? And you might hit a higher intensity because your body's not used to moving and you might go for a walk and hit an incline and then all of a sudden you're in a higher intensity. But over the course of a couple of weeks, that hill is going to flatten out for you. It's not going to feel hard. So we want you to just enjoy and learn how to move before we start putting in any kind of high intensity. Mm -hmm. And then it could be you're going on your 20 or 30 minute walk and you deviate and do some flights of stairs on your walk. Or maybe you... Uh, increase your pace a bit. So there's ways of phasing in high intensity and it's relative. And the fitter you get, the more that intensity comes into running sprints or battle ropes or kettlebell swings, the things that we talk about on a regular basis. Yeah. But anyone can start, just start by moving and then you can vary your intensity in your preferred mode. And it doesn't have to be something that's really, really focused in a gym. It can be, I'm going to go up this hill and I'm going to do 30 second hill reps. Mm -hmm. And it could be walking, could be running. It could be power walking, something like that. And that will get you on the road to doing and getting used to higher intensity. Okay. So I think this is where, and you, you just covered this a second ago. I think the conversation is getting muddled out there when women are feeling like there's a barrier to exercise because they think there's only one specific way to exercise. And what I hear you saying is there's different modes that do different things, but our time at this age, we want to really put in some of those high intensity intervals and those sprint intervals, but there is a phase in if you are new to exercise and it's totally appropriate to start there and then ramp up and, and start peppering in some of those hit sessions before you go full throttle. Yeah, because I don't want someone to have the experience that a lot of kids have, where kids are really active and having fun, and then they're put into like a PE class that makes them do running or makes them do something that they really don't like, and they get a really negative attitude around physical activity. When we are looking at adults who haven't been moving and they want to start their journey, we want it to be a positive reinforcement. So is it 10 minutes walking for three times a week at the start, that's better than nothing, right? So we look at phasing people in just like strength training. We're not going to throw someone in the gym and have them do a hundred kilo deadlift or anything like that, right? No, no, no. We phase everyone in. So I don't want people to think that there's this barrier because they're not fit enough or they're not confident enough. We did a study um, back when I was at Stanford looking at pre-fitness fitness. fitness. So what are the barriers to exercise? And one of them is, well, we know lack of community, but also the uncomfortable aspect of the heat and sweating. So we did some pre-cooling and taking away that one barrier allowed women to develop a fitness level that gave them the confidence to go out and join a class or join a gym or go out and do a hill instead. So we have to look at the barriers as well. So yeah, we can drink something cool for the um, the heat aspect, but also if you have ownership with a friend and you both want to start out on this journey, you're not going to tell your friend, okay, do 30 second sprints. <laughs> <laughs>